Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will give you five tips for those of you who are actually planning to start freelancing as native Android developers, because around a year ago, I also started doing that. And yeah, over this year, I managed to, to have a consistent source of clients that, that pay me well. And I think I can, I can just give you some advice for those who are just starting with that. And yeah, so that you can benefit from my mistakes and from what I learned in the past year. Number one is that you should have a strong portfolio or your own brand. So that means that you really need projects to show off. If your client doesn't know what you're capable of doing, then they just won't hire you. They have enough proposals, assuming you're on Upwork or somewhere else. I will take Upwork here as examples because that's a very popular platform to, to find clients. But if a client doesn't know what you're able to do, they just well, they will just click to the next proposal. They won't care. The alternative, or rather the addition to that, that will really help you on clients is having your own brand. So what that means is you should start sharing content for free on social media or some kind of blogs or so that just show off what you know. That's just some some other form of a portfolio, I would say. So basically what I do, for example, here on YouTube, I share Android development videos. I teach Android development and if, if a client actually needs an app and they see my videos, they, they might think, oh, um, Philip, Philip seems to, to, to know Android development quite well. I'll just send him an email and ask him if he can uh, do a little app for me. That's how, how I actually gain most of my clients. It's, it's not through sending proposals and Upwork. It's, it's through this YouTube channel. And of course, that is a lot of work to build your Instagram page, a YouTube channel, or writing some blogs on a regular basis. In the first time, nothing, absolutely nothing will happen. But you, if you stay consistent, then over time, your channel will grow, your, your Instagram page will grow. Um, you, you don't need to do all of that. But I would suggest you to just start sharing some kind of content on some platform, which you can actually also then send to potential clients in your proposals or so. And when we are already at Upwork proposals, so basically the, the letters you send to your clients when, you, when you're applying for their job, then I can really suggest you to, to make it as easy for the client as possible. So that means in your proposal, use clear paragraphs that, that kind of uh, separate what you want to say. So what I like to do is I just like to have some kind of question in my proposal if I send some that says, for example, why you should hire me, question mark, new line, and then you write whatever is your reason why the client should hire you and not somebody else. What also counts for this, for this point, is that you should include links in your proposals that clients can easily click. So I recently wanted to hire a video editor for these videos here on Upwork, and I was actually in the, in the client perspective for the first time. And that was really interesting for me because suddenly I started getting all these proposals and I wasn't sending these. And something I wanted to see by applying uh, freelancers was just uh, showing off their work. So just some videos they've edited because that is the fastest way I can see if, they actually, if they're actually good at what they do. And I noticed actually that if, if people sent me links that I can easily click to a YouTube video or Vimeo or whatever. I, I prefer these a lot more than if people send me MP4 files, which you can actually also do with Upwork. But that just takes some seconds to download. And you might think that's just a few seconds, but clients get so many proposals on Upwork, you really have to stand out and you have to take as little time of the client as possible while telling them that you can really do the job. All I want to say is, Provide links in your proposals that will show your clients what you're capable of doing. So your portfolio, maybe your YouTube channel, maybe Instagram page, maybe your LinkedIn page, maybe your blog, whatever. Just that, that clients know what you're capable of doing. Number three is actually something uh, I struggled quite some time with. And that is accepting jobs you're a little bit afraid of. And yeah, uh, I really want to stress a little bit here. You, you shouldn't accept jobs you're really afraid of and you think you, I mean, if you now accept a Bluetooth job in Android and you have absolutely no idea of Bluetooth, which is a very complex topic, then I would say you shouldn't do that and you should first learn a bit about Bluetooth. But if there is a little smaller topic you might not know that is required for a job, then 
just you can be confident that you can actually do that if you if you have that little anxiety you're able to do that because I also had that we all have that especially for the first client when we never did that and usually it, it just goes super well you, you you're able to do a lot more than you think number four is that you should start with a little lower wage a little lower hourly wage but then increase that from client to client and that is actually what most people don't do the, the increasing part that is super important you're probably not going to be able to to maintain uh, like $15 an hour or so um, I mean it, it depends on where you live but for example here in, in Germany if I would take $15 an hour I would I would go bankrupt um, so you really have to consider where you live but don't be afraid of actually increasing your hourly wage from client to client as you gain experience because of course then you can also provide more value for your clients in future if you gain that experience so for those of you who are wondering, it, it is definitely possible to, to make your $100, $150 an hour as a native Android development freelancer, if you're really an expert in your field. And finally, let's get to number five, and that is ignoring trash jobs. So in Upwork, there are so, so many trash jobs. People who want you to make the new TikTok for like $500 that's just not going to happen and don't don't apply to these jobs just ignore them because those clients are the most terrible clients they will they will take your app and spit you in the face and don't pay you so <laughs> these clients that pay the least are usually yeah the, the worst clients so just ignore them and only apply for for those jobs that are actually that have a clear job description and that have a client that that seems to know what they really want in terms of proposals it's a lot better if you if you really focus on your proposal and send fewer high quality proposals than just uh using using a shotgun and sending like 20 proposals a day where you have a copy and paste text that's that's not going to get you many clients it's it's a lot better to just focus on quality and maybe take yourself a goal of sending three proposals a day and over time you there is no other way of not getting clients if you're really good at what you do and that you can also show that off with a portfolio or your own brand. So that is it for this uh, five tips for freelancers video. Um, that is something new. I never really talked about freelancing here on my channel. But in case you're actually interested in more about freelancing and that I share more about my experience as especially as native Android developer because all of you are native Android developers then uh, let me know that in the comments and if I get a lot of good comments and a lot of good likes on this video and a lot of good views then I consider doing more of these videos. You can also get a lot of helpful Android and Kotlin advice by subscribing to my free email newsletter that way you get regular emails giving you Android Kotlin advice right into your inbox all for free so you can only benefit from that so down below there is a link where you can subscribe for that. You just need to enter your email and that is all you need to do. Thanks a lot for watching. I wish you an excellent day and I'll see you back in the next video. Bye bye.